what is considered the first and the best viceroy, uh, Antonio Mendoza, who actually was in charge from 1530 to 1550, in the territory that, as you were saying before, it was called the New Spain. Please pay attention, uh, uh, looking at the map, because you will see, uh, first of all here we have the flag that actually can be almost considered the first flag of this territory that includes uh, uh, most uh, uh, of the United States. And um, actually, um, we have uh, uh, to uh, uh, recognize, and everyone, uh, this is history, that the, the importance of Spaniards is uh, uh, due to the fact that not only they discovered, through the help also of Christopher Columbus, uh, not only they uh, explored, and, but they also started the settlement in the new continent, and uh, they actually they controlled, if you take a look at the map, uh, most of the territory that is now the United States of America. Now, this situation uh, actually uh, um, was previous to a very important date for us Americans, that is uh, November the 11th, 1620, when the, uh, the uh, Pilgrim Fathers, the father of our nation, they landed in uh, Cape Cod. Uh, they came with the Mayflower, a, a boat that actually uh, had on board 102 pioneers, a lot of ideals, and uh, actually uh, this was the ship of democracy. Uh, we should remember that these people came to the new continent because they couldn't practice freely their own religion in England. And uh, it's something very curious is that when the Mayflower uh, uh, sailed back to England, it was uh, uh, actually uh, broken into pieces and the pieces uh, were used uh, to build some uh, shacks, uh, some uh, uh, cabins uh, for the fishermen in London on uh, the River Thames. But uh, I, I'd like you to notice that here we are talking about 1620. The Spaniards, they were already on the American continent. So this is something that happened later on. In the uh, 18th century, the story of the Wild West began when people from the Eastern coast uh, were the pilgrim that we just seen landed started to go west uh, Looking for new land in the 19th century. There was a the very famous period of the gold rush That is to say people who were looking for gold some of these people uh, found it were lucky many didn't find it. so new towns were created on the mountains in the desert and when unfortunately uh, gold was not found uh, these uh, towns were abandoned and they became the so-called uh, ghost towns uh, uh, that now are visited by tourists or so used also by the uh, uh, movie industry. Uh, but uh, we have to uh, understand that life in this period uh, was uh, very, very dangerous. It was dangerous the same way that being dangerous for the conquerors, uh, uh, for, the uh, for, the, uh, for the Spaniards, the first Spaniards. And, uh, the dangers were actually, uh, you see that charge on the Indians, uh, who didn't like actually the white to uh, advance towards the west and take uh, their land so that they fought for their land. And it was dangerous also for wild animals. And so that the most of uh, well, the people uh, actually carried guns. Now, very recently, also the Supreme Court has decided something about the right of Americans to carry weapons. And uh, while this idea of people uh, having weapons is not understood completely abroad in Europe, for example, we must understand instead that in the American cultural tradition, there is this idea of uh, relying on a weapon for your own safety. So that this is something actually that the Americans are jealous of and of which, a tradition of which are proud, especially in some states like Texas. Mm -hmm. Certainly, the most worldwide uh, popular character in the conquest of the Far West is the cowboy. Also, the cowboy has uh, deep roots uh, with the uh, histor and the historic roots go back to Spain. They go to the early settlers of America, that is to say the, the conquerors, the Spaniards, and um, so that in general we can say that the, uh, uh, the American cowboy 
was nothing else but the angle evolution of the uh, Mexican charro and the Mexican vaquero. As a matter of fact, most of the uh, uh, terminology linked to the life of the cowboy, most of it is Spanish. Like for example, bandana, like for example, lasso, like for example, corral. In the 20th century, let's see the expansion of the uh, further expansion of the Spanish language. The language of the conquistadores, the language, the Spanish of the, of the uh, Spanish-speaking countries, of the Hispanics uh, uh, of the United States, was introduced to Africa. In, uh, we have it in Equatorial Guinea, we have it in Western Sahara, we have it also in uh, the, a section in the United States, in a section of New York City called Spanish Harlem, that uh, actually are areas that uh, were not uh, belonging to the Spanish Empire. So these are new uh, places. Today, uh, today, between 322 million and 400 million people speak Spanish as a native language, making it the world second most spoken language, uh, uh, with the exception spoken by native, with the exception, of course, of a Mandarin Chinese. But we find ourselves, I had anticipated that actually there was a clause uh, of this um, uh, talk that would be surprising. Uh, in this uh, historical and linguistic uh, ride, actually, we get to this 